Hello, this is Doug Byrne with Humboldt State University. This video is for BA360 Principles of Finance for the summer semester 2013. This is our project for using financial planning models for valuation. Uh, the company's stock limited value is Hasbro. So the purpose of this project is to come up with a, a per share uh, stock price uh, based on uh, the future free cash flows that we're going to project for Hasbro. We're going to make a lot of assumptions in this project. Uh, the first major assumption we're going to make is that sales are going to grow by 10%. Uh, the next major assumption we're going to make, scrolling down, is that our long-term growth rate is going to be 3.23%. That our, the weighted average cost of capital for Hasbro is accurately 15.8%. And that calculation, again, is based on uh, some assumptions as well, including the dividend growth rate. And then these value drivers. Now, these value drivers are mostly based on sales, and so sales is going to be the driving force uh, behind this uh, financial, financial planning model that we're making. So the first section we're going to look at after uh, these value drivers is our income statement and our balance sheet. And these are our pro forma income state and balance sheet. So these are projections 2013 through 2017. And so if we were going to really try to use uh, this model to accurately predict Hasbro stock price, we'd really have to put a lot of thought into is what should these um, 2013 through 2017 income statement and balance sheets really look like. And we're just basing them uh, largely on sales. To come up with, for example, our uh, research and development, we take the value driver based on our 2012 actual numbers and we multiply it by our projected sales and our projected sales are a 10% growth of the year before. So this model is, is heavily sales driven and driven heavily by that 10% growth rate. So if we were going to use this, we could come in here and we could, act, we could change any one of these numbers or all of these numbers to um, our prediction of what they will be in the future. So um, accurately predicting these performers is the real challenge and accurately predicting the future uh, is the challenge when investing in the stock market. So here's our pro formas. Um, again, most everything's based on our value drivers which are based on sales growth. Other things like depreciation is based on your current level of property plant equipment and uh, interest expenses based on your current level of debt. So once we've accurately, or once we have uh, have five years of future cash flows, of future income statements in place, then we can calculate free cash flow. The one thing we left off our free cash flow uh, calculation is the interest earned on cash balances. Uh, that number was uh, difficult for us to come up with, so we uh, did leave it out. But we run our... Um, profit after tax or net income uh, through the uh, free cash flow calculation to come up with uh, our projected free cash flows for the next five years. And then we have to figure out is what is the value of Hasbro beyond 2017? Once we get to 2017, what's its terminal value? What's its, uh, the value of its free cash flows beyond our five-year analysis period? Uh, beyond 2017. So we have to calculate a terminal value, and that's what we do here, using weighted average cost of capital, long-term growth rate, and the free cash flow as, um, here, sorry, here, seven, six, seven, eight, four, two. And remember all these numbers are in thousands. So we come up with our terminal value, we add the terminal value to the year 2017 projected cash flow, and then get our total cash flows. This is a lot like what we did when looking at uh, Sally and Dave's condo uh, example in um, project three. Once we have these total cash flows for our five year analysis period, uh, we can take their present value, add back our cash and our marketable securities and come up with the value of the firm. This is what our firm is worth. Uh, almost $6 billion I have Hasbro. Uh, value debt. Uh, we, after subtracting the company's debt out of that firm value, we come up with the equity value 
and we take equity value divided by number of shares outstanding, uh, which we've also converted to thousands. Uh, we get a per share equity valuation of $33.76. Uh, based on a current price of $44.12, um, our model would recommend uh, that any of our investors holding the stock would sell the stock. Um, if our per share equity valuation would be above the current share price, uh, then we'd recommend buy. If it was at the current share price, we might recommend a hold or a wait and see. When we use mid-year valuation, that means we assume that all of the cash flows occur on average in the middle of the year rather than at the end of the year. It's a little more realistic. Uh, this first valuation uh, assumes that all cash flows occur at the end of the year. So the second one might be a little more accurate. We get a little bit higher, a little bit closer to our current share price, but we're still uh, recommending sell with a per share equity valuation of $36.79 uh, using mid-year valuation. We do a little bit of sensitivity analysis. We say, well, what if sales growth uh, isn't 10%? What if it's 0%? Or what if it's 20%? And we can see that we would still recommend to sell uh, the sales growth. It does change um, the share price. You know, five dollars, almost five dollars share price. It is a substantial uh, swing, but we still don't get to the forty-four dollars and twelve cents of our current market price. We can also look at well, what if our WAC isn't fifteen point eight? What if it's eighteen? Or if it's twelve? What if it's nine? What if it's six? And we can look at how that changes the equity value of the company. This number right here. So with a $4 billion equity value, it comes out to $33 a share. And that is our financial analysis of Hasbro. Recommend a sell. Uh, thank you for watching, and please look forward to more videos in the future.